I think for many of us and maybe even for most of us, it is easy for us to fall into a rut. We can so quickly find ourselves in the routine of work and family and even retirement and we succumb to a temptation to tedium to see things not as they really are, each moment that is charged with the very life of God and the fullness of His grace, but just as things seem to be, how the repetitiveness of each day can lead to feelings that things are mundane or monotonous. And this tendency can also affect our spiritual life, the repetitiveness of what we do here as a family, as a parish family. Every Sunday, we gather to visibly do the same thing. And each year, we move through a year of grace, the liturgical year that begins today with this first Sunday of Advent, then moves through those seasons of Christmas and then ordinary time and then Lent and Easter and then resuming ordinary time till the end of the liturgical year. And so as we begin this year, I think it's important for us to be aware of and careful to avoid the nonchalance that can come when we are engaged in the same thing, if you will, year in and year out. We should pray earnestly to avoid that temptation to tedium so that we might see the newness of each day, how each moment of each day is an incomparable opportunity for us to be touched by God, to grow in that life that He wishes to share with us. Each year on this first Sunday of Advent, we hear the same message that is proclaimed that we are to prepare that we are to be attentive to our spiritual life and how hard that is for us in our materialistic world. And certainly during Advent when we will be constantly bombarded with advertisements over the next three weeks to do nothing but shop and buy. What is the preparation that you and I, men and women of faith, are called to undertake? What are we to focus upon? as we anticipate our celebration of Christmas. Advent each year has two separate themes, two parts, if you will. The first part that we focus on is not upon Christmas, when the Son of God first came as our Savior, but upon when He will come again in majesty as our judge. Listen again to what our Lord says in the Gospel. Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. You know, each year in November, we pray for all of those whose names are inscribed on our All Souls envelopes. We do that each day. When we began this month, All Souls Day fell upon a Sunday, and we recited the names of all those of our parish family who died this past year, and we had their names listed in the books at the entrances to the church. But throughout this month, have we really taken the time to think of them and to pray for them? Have we thought about our own death? Again, Jesus says three times in our gospel that we are to watch, to be attentive to that reality that awaits us as death. As we recalled last Sunday, that dramatic scene of the last Sunday recorded at the end of St. Matthew's gospel. Do we try to keep this in the forefront of our mind or do we easily forget it or not even think about it? Do we just go through each day in that repetitiveness of life? Do we remain locked, if you will, in our own routines? How can we break out of that attitude of inattentiveness that can creep in and open ourselves up to the wondrous experience of God's life and love that He wishes to share with us Certainly it is the theme of today's reading, the final coming of Christ, the thought of our own death that has the power to alert us and to dramatically change us. This event that awaits all of us at a time that we do not know has a fundamental meaning and it calls us and it prompts us to be alert, to break out of any kind of ambivalence that can creep in. And at the root of this call to change, can't we see it the first step? is to seek forgiveness of our sins, to experience God's healing and His restorative love. 
what an indescribable gift that mercy of God is and how it is the only conceivable way that we can properly prepare for his second coming by crying out to the Lord, I am sorry, and then by hearing him say to us, I forgive you. Our first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah refers to that dialogue. This part of this book is believed to have been written after the people's return from the exile, that physical movement of their separation, the destruction of Jerusalem, and then their returning symbolizes our movement from sin to reconciliation. As the writer questions God as to why he lets us wonder while our guilt carries us away like the wind, but then we cry out to the Lord to return for the sake of his servants. God's mercy then will prompt us to a growing thanksgiving that St. Paul refers to in our second reading. That the grace of God bestowed on us in Christ Jesus, how in him we are enriched in every way. It is arguable that the most important thing that will occur during Advent in all of our parishes as each gathers for our Advent communal penance service. Ours here will be held on Tuesday night, December 16th. And there will be many others in all the parishes that will be listed in next week's bulletin. Please, as you and I now begin this new liturgical year, this holy season of Advent, which in a sense is the same for us year in and year out, let us strive to open ourselves to the newness that it presents for us. Let us try to break out of whatever tedium can affect us, not just to repeat what we do each year, but to do it in a different way, to receive the power of God's mercy in the sacrament of penance so that Christmas will be a new experience for us, this Advent, a season of great grace, as we look to when this baby, who is God, was born to us. But first we are called to look to that time when he will come again in glory. When we pray, we will be prepared, alert, and he will bring us into that never-ending glory of heaven.